Namaste, guys. Um, hello, and uh, it's nice to see you all. Um, we're going to do a little bit of uh, wrist releasing and stuff for the hands and fingers today. Um, so this is just, just a really short practice. Um, I'm going to find myself onto a wee block for sitting. Uh, you can uh, sit or kneel, sit in a chair, do whatever feels good for you. So uh, at the moment, I'm knitting a baby blanket for a friend. And uh, because of the, uh, the weight of the blanket, I've noticed that in the last few days that my wrists and hands are getting a little bit of additional discomfort beyond what they normally feel um, as they get a little bit stiff um, and tense after uh, knitting in the evenings. <laughs> but you may have wrist um, uh, tension or discomfort from completely different reasons. Uh, but a few years ago, I fell and fractured my wrist as well. So um, I take a little bit of care with the wrists. And this is what I do when I need to release them. So I thought I'd share it with you. So the, the wrist doesn't have any muscles to support it across the wrist. It's all supported with uh, ligaments and tendons, which is normal for most joints. Um, but because the wrist is a mishmash of lots of tiny wee bones stuck together, um, articulating so that we can move our wrists in lots of fun, fabulous ways, sometimes people feel a little bit discomfort, a little bit of wear and tear as we get older as well. And in yoga, you do a lot of things on hands and knees or in downward dog or in plank pose, um, which are weight bearing into the arms and the wrists which if you're not used to it, can feel a little bit uncomfortable. So the key thing is to build up in your tolerance and your uh, practice a little at a time so you get used to it. So you never take away uh, extra discomfort from your yoga practice. So we're going to begin today with just shaking out the wrists, making the hands really floppy. The, the fingers really floppy. You can shake them in all sorts of different ways. That's quite a nice thing to do. Oh, I quite enjoy that. <laughs> um, particularly if you've got uh, tension, just shaking it away. And then after that, there's lots of things we can uh, do to help our hands and uh, fingers and wrists and forearms feel a little bit better. One of the favorite things I like to do is bring the tips of the thumbs to the little fingers, then the ring fingers, middle fingers, first fingers, little fingers, ring fingers, middle fingers, first fingers. So this is good for helping to build up, uh, helping to improve strength, articulation, coordination, and you can go as quickly as you like. Don't worry if you fluff it. Nobody's watching. And then we can go the opposite way. So first fingers, middle fingers, ring fingers, little fingers. Sometimes when I reverse this, <laughs> it takes a bit of coordination <laughs> for me to get it. So just keep going again as quickly as you can with accuracy. And then you can go from little fingers to first fingers and back to little fingers. I have to look somewhere that's not on the video, otherwise I fluff it. <laughs> Very good. So these are little finger exercises that you can do when you finish just giving your fingers a little bit of a, a wriggle and a schmiggle or a flutter and then shaking out your wrists again. And you'll be able to feel that perhaps in uh, your forearms or perhaps in your fingers or your hands. Um, and if you can't feel it, that's okay. It's not a problem at all. Then we're just going to roll the wrists by bringing the backs of the hands together, rolling them together and apart. 
This is my favorite thing to do, to release the wrists. And we used to live in Azerbaijan. And in Azerbaijan and uh, the Persian Peninsula, if you like, uh, the ladies dance like this. So there's a lot of this kind of rolling of the wrist. It's very beautiful to watch. Um, not so much movement in the lower body. We can reverse that movement here. But that's what it reminds me of. The beautiful dancing. So releasing your wrists in that way is nice because it bends the wrist in the opposite way from the way it's usually bent when we've got the hand on the floor. Um, and that helps to lengthen out the structures that are sometimes shortened by this position, but also it puts the hands in this position as well, which helps us to stretch out underneath here. Um, so sometimes the discomfort that you feel from being on hands and knees a lot, um, if it's in the wrist is because we're sh short in these muscle groups across the forearm uh, from our other daily movements. So once we've done that, we can begin to uh, do a little bit of uh, fascial release. And there are lots of uh, things that you can do this with. So there are special uh, fascial release balls that you can buy, which are a bit like a really uh, firm squash ball, but a normal tennis ball will do just fine. And we can roll the tennis ball across the um, palms of the hands, pressing quite firmly. And some people like to focus on one hand. So you're manipulating the ball with your uh, other hand and you can you can press into the all of the structures across the palm of the hand and if you rest on something across the fingers as well. Don't rest on the hard floor because that will nobble your bony bits on the floor. But you can rest onto your thigh or a cushion something like this. Yoga mat would probably be okay as well. And then do the opposite side as well. And I particularly feel it myself in the, uh, the ball of the thumb, that sort of a soft mound at the bottom of the, the thumb. And that is where I really love to get the ball and roll it, iron out some of those kinks. So you can do all of your thumb, your fingers, the whole of the palm of your hand. And you can, uh, so stress balls uh, are quite common in offices, apparently. I haven't worked in an office for many, many years. But if you've got one at the office, then you can use it as well. Just doing whatever feels good. Even squeezing it's quite nice as well. Uh, and as I say, any, any ball will do, pretty firm, tennis ball, perfect. And once we've done that, you can maybe, as you release, feel the warmth, the increased blood flow to the palms of the hands, the muscular structures across the inside of the fingers. And we've, we've uh, released blockages and tension in our energetic lines there, and now we can stretch them out. So if you take the little finger of one hand and you're stretching it down as much as feels comfortable. We're just going to run our hands across the palm of the hand and then down the finger in a sort of massaging way, a little bit like you would imagine what you do if you're milking a cow, I think. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't milked a cow, <laughs> despite living in the country, despite having cows right outside. So, do the little finger and then the ring finger. And it might be that it's a bit harder to do it across the palm of the hand when you're into your other fingers. But you could try if you wanted to into the middle finger. Don't worry about the clicking, that's all okay. As long as it's not every time. And the first finger. and the thumb. And on the thumb, I'm going to sort of 
find a it, it, finding a sort of a lengthened position which might not need to be all the way down it could be out to the side like this once we've done that you can take the whole hand lengthen your arm away from you and just draw your fingers gently back towards you and you don't have to do this really really as firmly as possible we don't want to create tension in the shoulders so softening the shoulders down and perhaps avoid locking the elbow straight as well if we keep a little softness in the elbow then that length that we get happens here in the forearm rather than across the joint of the elbow or into the shoulders and holding just for a couple of long deep breaths and it might be that you want to also hold your thumb in some way as well. Uh, with thumbs, so I have quite arthritic thumbs uh, and I don't want to do anything that would exacerbate that. Um, so if your thumbs are tender, just taking care, perhaps not holding a stretch, but just doing uh, a nice little uh, more dynamic movement. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So we want to lengthen all the way down the little fingers. Sort of that massaging, almost milking movement. And then the other fingers as well. Middle fingers. And your hands will be different, so they perhaps react a little bit differently. The hand that you write with may feel stiffer or perhaps less stiff if you stabilize more with your opposite hand, your thumb as well. And uh, so just observing, there's, there's no right or wrong way to feel in yoga. Your body just is the way it is. And what we're doing is trying to accept it the way it is and help it to feel at ease the way it is. So then we want to stretch out the, all of the fingers, drawing the uh, fingers back towards the body without lifting that shoulder, softening the shoulder down, without locking the elbow all the, straight, uh, all the way straight, just keeping that a little softness across that joint. And a couple of long deep breaths. And then perhaps finding a way to stretch out your thumb as well. And again, it might be that it's a little bit less of a hold and a little bit more dynamic. Just whatever suits you. And the other thing that we can do is we can hold the thumbs back towards the wrist. So this is really hard to demonstrate like this. And some of you will easily get your thumbs back towards your forearms. Mine used to touch, they don't get quite so close anymore. You can see that that takes the hand into that sort of stretched in the opposite way position and do the same on the other side as well. Always, always gentle, gentle but firm, never increasing any discomfort that you already feel. So never stretching to the point of pain, never pushing, striving. Take the ego out of your practice. I'm a work in progress in that respect. So once we've done all of that, and that feels really quite amazing um, on the wrists and the hands, we can begin to do a little bit of uh, more practical stretching. So what we, would, what we would use in yoga practice. So on your hands and knees, with your knees maybe just a little touch closer to your hands than normal, we can keep the hands on the floor and do some rotating of the upper body. So here I often focus on uh, making a circle with the center of the chest where I keep the arms lengthened, maybe not locked straight, but lengthened and 
feel the weight coming into the heels of the hands, the outside and inside edges and the fingers. And we're going the opposite way as well. And so you're exploring how your, uh, what the relationship between your hands, your arms, your wrists, your shoulders, what that relationship is, where you perhaps feel uh, a little bit of tension or resistance in the body, perhaps where you have a little sense of compression. And then coming back to the center, we're just going to rest for a moment, really soften the hands by uh, shaking them out again or rolling through the wrists or both if you prefer. And just notice how that feels. So I can, I feel now the, the heat beginning to build in the forearms and the wrists themselves. I don't want to do too, too much. I don't want to um, make them feel uncomfortable, uh, but I do like to stretch the opposite way. So I'm going to turn my palms upwards and then take the backs of the hands to the floor. Again, not locking the elbow straight, not feeling tension into the shoulders, keeping the fingers uh, not spread so, so wide, but apart is quite good. And take as much weight as feels comfortable into the, out, into the backs of the hands. And I feel this stretch down the outside of the forearm. Um, you might feel it somewhere different on across the wrist itself into the back of the hand. And again, just a few deep breaths before releasing and relaxing, letting the hands shake out. And that feels really good. I, I like that when, particularly when I've been on hands and knees a lot. And then we can uh, further develop this, this sense of length down the wrists, which we did begin with this practice earlier. Um, and we can do that by turning the palms of the hands uh, so that the fingers are back towards the body. And for some people, you might even be able to turn the fingers in towards each other a little bit. Mine are a little bit uncomfortable when I do that. So uh, taking care that you're not moving towards the very, very end of your range of movement when you're loading the body as well. So we're going to do something to increase the feeling of stretch. So if you start at 100% and you increase the feeling of stretch, almost certain to injure yourself. So start uh, definitely not at 100%, but wherever feels good to you. And so again here, trying to keep the shoulders nice and soft. We don't really want to lock the elbows out completely straight because when we do that, we tend to lift the movement into the shoulders as well. So a little softness in the elbows and then keeping the heels of the hands on the floor, just trying to bring your weight back a little bit so you feel an increase, a sense of stretch uh, down the inside of the forearm and across the wrist. And when you've done that there, you might want to just release the hands and take them out to the side and you can go all the way to one side or the other, or you can simply sit back like this. And we're trying to keep the thumbs down, the whole palm towards the, the mat, the floor. You can do it here with the hands in the center, but we do that all of the time. So turning the hands inward, so the opposite way around. And again, you might be able to turn your fingers quite a long way back towards your body. It doesn't matter if you can't trying to ease that um, uh, the heels of the hands towards the floor at the same time as you relax your uh, weight away from the hands themselves. And here it helps to lengthen the arms a little bit, maybe not all the way straight again, but trying to uh, keep the shoulders away from hunching up towards the ears. And that feels really nice. And it might feel uh, quite good to have a little sway here, perhaps. Just up to you. After a few deep breaths, gently releasing. So taking the weight off your hands as you release and just feeling that wonderful sensation of energy coming into the fingers. Shaking out if it feels good to shake out, rolling the wrists if it feels good to roll the wrists. 
at the end of this, we want to feel a sense of release and relief, not a sense of discomfort or pain. So maybe the first few times you do this, just going gently. Um, and so to finish uh, a child's pose. So extended child's pose, sometimes called Shashankasana, um, or the pose of the hair, because your hands look a bit like the ears of a hair, is classically done with the forehead on the floor and the arms stretched out in front of us. If we want to help to sort of uh, ease the wrists, we can turn the palms upwards and then soften the elbows. And this has the sensation of taking all of the weight off the wrists and just engaging a little bit, uh, a little bit of additional stretch across the shoulders and arms. So a few deep breaths here, letting the hands be nice and relaxed. And so this variation of child's pose, I really like to do when I've been doing an awful lot of uh, plank pose and uh, hands and knees. Hands and knees is the posture I find the hardest, the most challenging. So some of that is because um, we don't have as much uh, cooperation with our other muscles. So if you think about hands and knees and hands and knees with the hands directly underneath the shoulders, the wrists are in a really flexed position. If you, like me, don't, don't enjoy this posture quite so much, then you might prefer to have your hands just a little bit in front of you. That takes the weight off the wrists um, uh, a little bit. But if you come into plank pose, then Amazingly enough, this is much easier for me to hold um, because the, my core muscles are much more engaged. So there's much more of the body involved in this, in keeping this shape. Whereas in hands and knees, I feel like I've got most of my weight into my wrists, even if that's not really the case, just the way it feels. And in downward facing dog, um, we open that space between the hand and the forearm. So it becomes a little uh, less of an acute angle. Um, and that is, for me, a little bit uh, more comfortable in the wrists. So exploring, exploring how it feels to be on your wrists when you need to. Following this little video to give them a little bit of a release. Um, and actually what it will help to do is to uh, increase that uh, healthy length over the forearm, increase the strength and coordination of the hands, fingers, the, the arms as well. Um, and eventually you will find that it's much easier to be on your wrists. Uh, but as with all things in yoga, it takes time. Always remember not to do too much at a time, but I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And I will look forward to seeing you um, in class or on another one of the videos. Namaste, guys. Take care.